I'm James Johnson, and you're watching Niagara Pro Tips. Welcome back to part two for the history rollup function. In the first part one video, we talked about using BQL queries with the history rollup function, and also the web chart with some basic sampling stuff that we could do rollup functions with. So now we want to talk a little bit about series transform graphs and uh, how those work. And we don't have time to really go into full depth about that in this training video about series transforms, but I'll just show you some of the basics here. So I have a series transform graph, uh, and it's uh, using the series transform palette, uh, which has the transform graph, history source nodes, some various nodes, and the terminal node here. And in this case, I have a history source node in the, in the graph. It's pointed at that same main KW history, and the time range is set for last week. That's linked into a rollup node, and the rollup node is linked into a terminal node. When I look at the rollup node, you'll see that there's a schema defined, and you can define that schema by clicking this play button, which will add all the available schemas, or you can click the plus button and add an individual schema. Uh, but I'm typing in the names of the schema items, in this case, capital min, capital average, and capital max, and then I'm picking the functions like min, max, average, or sum, and so forth, and I'm selecting what data inputs are being aggregated together into that rollup function. And then I'm picking a rollup interval. So in this case, I selected daily, but I could choose from one of those other uh, periods, or I can choose custom, which would allow me to punch in some uh, number like you know three hours or two hours or six hours or whatever I needed. And when I look at the terminal node, you'll see this is showing me the schema of the terminal node. It has a timestamp. Uh, a schema named min, average, and, and max here. And you can resolve that uh, series transform graph simply by right-clicking on it and choosing resolve graph, uh, or you can embed that into a PX view to show the, the rendering. And in this case, I have a PX file set up here showing some different rendering of series transforms. Uh, so this uh, small chart here is uh, one of the legacy charts, and really it was just created by dragging the series transform graph onto the PX view in, uh, in the Make Widget Wizard, uh, choosing to display a chart. Uh, so this adds a, um, uh, a, a chart pane here, and the chart pane has this uh, bar chart on it, and the bar chart um, has the, the binding to that transform graph and it has a query there to the transform graph, which is setting up all the axis and everything for you. So you just drag it out and it populates. Um, the other thing I did was drag out the series transform graph and choose chose collection table. So that added this table widget here, which is showing me the data in a tabular fashion, similar to um, using the bound table with the BQL query. So this is just using a, a collection table with a workbench view binding to that series transform graph. Uh, now, we can also um, use a, a web chart uh, to display this, but uh, one of the things that is a limitation, I guess, somewhat of uh, the web charts is that it's expecting the schema from the series transform graph to have the timestamp column uh, with the lowercase t and a value column with a lowercase v. So in this case, when I look at my transform graph and my terminal node and look at that schema, the, the web chart won't pick up on these uh, schema names here and display these values, unfortunately. So uh, one solution for that is to uh, create individual uh, series transforms for those functions. So what I did was I made uh, a similar um, transform graph here. It's, it's also looking at that main KW uh, for the same time range and you know, roll up function terminal node. But in this case, in my rollup node, what I did was I created the schema with uh, the name value there, lowercase, and I just have one rollup function here, just the min in this uh, series transform. So when I look at the terminal node, you can see the schema has the timestamp and the value, which is what the web chart is expecting. And what I ended up doing was just creating um, three individual uh, series transforms here, and uh, this one does the min function, this does the max, and this, or, I'm sorry, average, and then the max function. So on the PX view, um, what I did was I uh, brought in uh, uh, multiple WB view bindings pointing to those individual series transforms, which are giving me the data sets with my min, max, and, and average values. 
and I also uh, embedded that into a, a dashboard pane, you know, which uh, makes it a little bit easier to configure so I can choose the um, bar chart setting and the time range and things like that. But it's, it's using the web chart with uh, series transforms then to aggregate the data and it allows me to um, show min, max, and average essentially from the same data source. Um, the, the limitation of the web chart itself uh, kind of prevents me from doing that without maybe using the series transforms uh, like that. If you look at the, again, the web chart, if I had multiple um, trends on here, the sampling tab uh, is where you specify the aggregation function, the aggregate function, and that's going to apply to all of the series that are in the web chart. Uh, so we wanted to aggregate outside the scope of the web chart using the series transform and then display the results using the series transform or using the web chart with the series transform embedded. So a little bit of voodoo magic there, but uh, one way to approach it. Now, uh, another thing uh, that we can use to do aggregation is Niagara Analytics. And in this case, um, in the station, I do have uh, the analytics service in the station. And uh, I have uh, set up uh, a data point in my station that maps to that main KW history uh, with an N colon history tag. It has an A colon A uh, marker tag, so it can be used in analytics. And, and uh, it has a HS uh, colon power tag on it as well. And what this allows us to do is to use things like analytic proxy extensions, um, labels, uh, or charts and tables in the PX with those analytic bindings. And uh, so this happens to be a, uh, an analytic chart. Uh, if you take a look in the uh, analytics palette, then there's uh, a lot of uh, different charts that are available here. This just happens to be the analytic web chart. And then the table here uh, comes from the tables um, uh, subfolder here in the palette, and it's just a web table. But the idea here, and I, and I embedded both of these into a dashboard pane so that I could persist some of those configuration properties as well, maybe a little bit more easily. And when we look at um, the settings, you'll see that there's a, a, a trend or a binding essentially looking at the HS power uh, data tag, and it's searching a, a certain scope uh, to find that point, right? There. And uh, then I'm specifying the roll-up interval to be day and the roll-up function, the aggregate function to be min. And then there's additional bindings uh, for the same HS power uh, for a daily roll-up for average, and then also a daily roll-up for max value. So in this case, it's using you know one data, uh, three bindings to essentially the same data source, uh, and then it's you know, specifying the different aggregate functions to display in the analytic chart there. Uh, the table is essentially the same functionality. Uh, it has three bindings to the table, uh, same thing looking at HS power, and pointed to some node in the station where it could find the HS power readings and it's rolling up those values. Um, what's maybe kind of interesting about the analytics approach as well is that if it does find multiple HS power sources wherever you point that binding to, then it will also aggregate those, uh, you know, potentially sum those values together. So it might take the min, max, and average of the individuals and then sum those together for a, a collective reading like a virtual uh, meter of the whole building or something along those lines. So there's lots of ways to uh, roll up data within Niagara, uh, that roll up the hist historical data. And uh, some of the simplest ways are using the, the charts with the legacy chart builder that we went through and demonstrated. Uh, but you can use uh, bound tables with BQL queries with the history roll up functions. Remember the, the schema of that roll up function. Uh, and you can even format this information further if you want to uh, pretty easily. And uh, remember the, the functions for the history roll-up interval, the, the tags that you can use for those periods. And then we can also um, use the series transforms uh, to, uh, well, actually we can use the web chart, which is the sampling function, right? So the sampling function allows us to specify the aggregate functions and our uh, roll-up periods and things that we want to use. Uh, we can also use um, the uh, transform graphs with these uh, roll-up nodes so that we can specify um, different roll-up functions and we can embed those into uh, either legacy charts, bound tables, and web charts, or we can use the analytics chart, charts, tables, and bound labels and so forth with the bindings.
So it gives you quite a bit of flexibility. Hopefully you have some ideas of how you can utilize this in your own stations. And thanks for watching these videos on history rollup functions. Thank you.